welcome to another episode of Movie Crunch. Second time recording here today. Yes. Um, in the second episode. And as always for Movie Crunch, I'm Eric O'Donnell. I'm Hannah Sutter. And I'm Nate Schaffner. And this is the show where we talk, where we watch movies and then talk about them. And you watch now. Hopefully. You watch, watch us talk about yes. them. You watch and listen with your eyes and your ears. <laughs> Thank and you for that lesson on biology. You're welcome. <laughs> That's what I do. I'm actually in biology right now. Um, not at this mo very moment, but I am in the cot class itself. Again, not at this very moment. Um, but today <laughs> we are talking about a movie that is my first time seeing, actually. Yes. Um, and you guys have, how many times have you guys seen it? A million. Uh, maybe like six or seven times. Okay. This movie, and we want to do this movie because of the passing of the late great, of the late great Robin Williams. Yes. Uh, we, we're doing Good Will Hunting today. And, yeah, I saw this movie and I was just like... Blown away. What? Rocked. Like, to, to have, like, these two young guys, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, write this thing and then, then just come out with this and then, like, it just be made into this amazing movie to write it and act in it yeah yeah like, yeah that never happens unless you're sylvester stallone and then you write rocky and <laughs> yeah. who else is gonna be rocky <laughs> <laughs> jason statham no. <laughs> no adrian no <laughs> best jason statham impression well, the, ever well the movie would not never have even gotten made without robin williams because ben affleck and man damon were just kids and nobody would green light the movie and uh, Robin Williams wanted to work with Gus Van Sant, and mm -hmm. they both got their hands on the script. And Robin Williams was like, yeah, I have to be involved in this. Yeah, and um, I mean, Rob Reiner originally had it. and Really? Yeah, and he ended up turning it down because he wasn't sure what to do with it. Because I don't know if you know this, but originally there was a lot more spy stuff in it. Like really? In the original script. Interesting. It was like guys running away from the... From, yeah. Huh. Because, wow. Because they wanted to use... Oh, his his brain. mind for mind. espionage code, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They, they touch on that a little bit in the movie, but it's not... I, I, it's but like a, two scenes. It's, yeah, yeah, it's like it's like really just two scenes. And if yeah. you never... And again, if you've never watched Movie Crunch before, we always um, diagnose... A, not diagnose. That sounds bad. Diagnose. We always break a movie down. The movie is sick. We do an autopsy. Yeah, we do an autopsy. That's when we cut it open and we're like, look at you. You got writing. You got rigging cinematography and directing. Oh, look at here. Over here next to the brain, you got favorite scenes and it's all gross. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we do favorite scenes, writing, acting, and directing. And we talk about uh, the actors as well. And we discuss the ending. And so we can just get right on into the writing of this movie. And like we said, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon wrote this together. Yeah, like, and, and I know you, I know you were wondering whether it's based on the book. I'm like, oh no. no. I, I, th I seriously thought it was until you told me. I'm like, yeah. oh, well, this is, and it was, how it's was an the original. book? I'm it's like, original, oh and crap. I think partially influenced by Matt Damon's uh, college yeah. experience, but obviously he's not a mathematic prodigy. But no. Right. That we know of. That, that we, we know, know of. of. We don't know for sure. No, we do not know that because he's never divulged that information. But yeah, it's written by the, just the, these two guys, and they were like, I, I saw when I watched the movie, like Matt Damon wasn't even as old as I am right now, and he's that in this makes movie. You feel like an asshole. Doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like he's, he, it's what like, have I done? Yeah, because he's like, because that that like near the this isn't the end of the movie, so there's no spoilers on this. But like they give him a car at some point in the movie. And he's like, and for your twenty one for your twenty first birthday, you can drink and now you can drive. That's the best thing we could have given you. And I'm like, he was only twenty when he freaking wrote this. Yeah. What am I doing? Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, you well, feel what, like what oh. I love. I mean, I mean, Goodwill Hunting is, for me personally, it's the most inspirational movie I've, I've ever seen because it I I've done I literally did what Matt Damon does well I mean to a certain extent so you're math you're not a math no but I mean um, for so many years I think for about 10 years and me and my cousin Jason have talked about this quite a lot is that for maybe about 10 years all I did was talk about how I'm gonna go back to school and pursue my dream and do all this big stuff and then, good, yeah. and then Good Will Hunting was ultimately the movie that said to me, hey, get up off your ass mm -hmm. and just do it. Because if you don't, then you're going to regret it. And 
that's what Goodwill Hunting means to me personally. Wow. It's the takeaway. Yeah. It is the takeaway. Yeah, of the uh, entire movie. Yep. Carpe diem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just <laughs> seize it. Just seize that day. Not seize the carp. That'd be stupid. <laughs> That's a bad joke. I apologize. It is a bad that. joke. I'm Terribly. So <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Um, um, you don't need to edit that out, Bryce. <laughs> one, one thing about the writing I like is the ending, so we'll have to come. We'll have to circle back. To yeah, that part. to circle back. Circle back to that it. part. So we can just. So if we want. So we're eventually circle back to writing from the ending. So we'll just go straight into directing and cinematography. What do we want to talk about? Acting first or directing? I vote acting. I vote acting. Let's do acting. The again, they both Ben Affleck and Matt Damon wrote this, and they acted it too. So yeah. that's a big thing. Well, that was their big. Uh, Ask. It's yeah. Like they they pitched this and they were like, we want to be yeah. the these guys. Director. Yeah. Who, as someone who's worked in a production office, that's laughable to me. I'm like, how did they make that work? Right. Um, also, we're gonna be the leads. <laughs> <laughs> we wrote this. I also want to star in it. <laughs> no, no pressure or anything. Like, well, you and, I, and I think Matt Damon was actually nominated for lead actor. Yes. In the movie too. And, and, and he, to be fair, he deserves it. He was just. But he was I mean, when you go up against Jack, when you go up against Jack Nicholson, yeah, good you're, you're gonna lose. Oh yeah, you're gonna lose all the time because <laughs> it's Jack Nicholson. Well, and then they went up against Titanic as well for best picture. That's yeah. true. They did, and that was Sorry, kind of a, it's kind of a no-win scenario right there. <laughs> uh, even though that everybody knows the ending of Titanic. <laughs> well, you, Hannah, you and I were talking about how Ben Affleck in the movie doesn't look like Ben Affleck. It's the teeth, guys. I'm telling you, it's the teeth. <laughs> he, he, he rounded off, and now they're very straight. He looks odd. Like, he doesn't yeah. look like himself. Like, he's a good-looking dude. He's a good-looking guy. I but... tried to find a picture to illustrate this to Nate, and I could not find a single picture of Ben Affleck's teeth. Well, <laughs> the guy knows. The guy knows. <laughs> like, I better You're hide like, my teeth. And, no. and this is one of the movies where, like, when it was, it was early in Ben Affleck and Matt Damon's career. Like, like this yeah. is their first thing they did. Well, they each had like one sort of bigger thing. Like Ben Affleck had Dazed and Confused. Yeah, that's and true. And Matt Damon had School Ties. That's true. Okay. So they, they had enough of something. Yeah. So people weren't like, yeah. who the hell but, are you? Yeah, I do. Uh, just quickly, I want to say that these are the 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 the, the Dazed and Confused and the uh, this movie. The way his character Ben Affleck is in this movie. Is so is part of the reason I'm going to touch on. It, I'm sorry. Is part of the reason people aren't too fond of him being Batman. Well, oh God. these these are, <laughs> careful, careful. Yeah. And I, all I'm going to say is that that mo those movies are like chance. 20 yeah. years old. Now, all, yeah, and you know what? He's been the most recent thing he's done besides this is he's written, directed, and starred in Argo. Yeah. Which which it, was awesome. Which is a phenomenal movie. Yeah. Go if you, you haven't seen, seen it, it, go please see it now, yes. and that'll prove to you Stop that he watching can do, us right now. That he can do bad. No, they can still watch us. <laughs> they, watch, watch us as well. Watch us and then go watch Argo. Maybe we'll talk about Argo. Maybe we'll talk about Argo at some point. Mm. But that's the reason people the, the early things they just people remember his early stuff, and that's why they think he won't make a good Batman. And I personally think he'll make, and I'm just going to go on record and say this, it's going to be on tape because I can say it. It's going to be awesome. It's He's going to be the best Batman since Michael Keaton. <laughs> yeah. My, our producer over there is looking at us like, like I'm insane. Gauntlet dropped. And I looked straight at the camera when I said this, so I, I mean it. I mean it. So uh, Casey Affleck plays Morgan. Casey. Oh, she, oh, she it took is? me seriously like two or three times watching it, and it hit me like a ton of bricks that that was Casey Affleck. Yeah. Because wow. he looks like such a like little boy with right. his little curly hair, and he has all these <laughs> off-color lines. Yeah. My, my boy's wicked smart. Yeah. My boy's wicked smart. <laughs> I swallowed a bug. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, like, and Cole Hauser plays Billy. Yeah. Who, uh, I feel like he always plays cops. Yeah. So it's right. kind of that's that's just what I was gonna say. Side. Yeah, and you have Dr. Eric Selvik in his first. He's so much more than. Dr. I know, but that's how I his, know him. He, so shut his, up. He has a name. I know, but I only know him his, by that. I'm sorry. Stellan Skarsgård plays um, Professor Lambeau, and I think that it was his first American movie, and because he was he's very well known in Sweden. Yeah. Yep. Um, he was not in his underwear for half this performance, just to let everybody know. He was strapped ill, I'm just saying. 
He was bootstrap, also bootstrap Bill. Bootstraps, bootstraps, bootstraps. That's right. He was also bootstraps Bill. I forgot <laughs> about that. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And, that, and his, their back and his back and forth with Robin Williams is really good. It's it's really well done. Yeah. Like. Even like even the back and forth between Matt Damon and Robin Williams. That's yeah. like that's like the backbone of this movie. Yeah. Is well, the, the is the, the back rapport. and forth. Yeah, the yeah. rapport. Well, and I like that he doesn't just seem like a a pompous person, like somebody who is just trying to ride the coattails of Matt Damon. Yeah. Right. He wanted to be him. Yeah. And yeah. you kind of see this like weird dynamic of Robin Williams being really great, but he's really okay with just being a guy who's for the people. Right? Yeah. He doesn't really want to claim. Yeah. He wants to help people. Yeah. And then you have his best friend. And then, of course, you have the school. Robin Williams saying, you know, what if he doesn't want what you want? What if he doesn't want to be what like What if he doesn't want to be you? You know, this isn't yeah. about you. Yeah. Well, if we're going to talk about acting, I mean, the, Matt Damon and Robin Williams are Steal the seriously show. the, the yeah. spine of this film. They are. Yeah. They're, if they're the everything in this and film. And they're on the covers. So and, I, and I went through... <laughs> My own bout of depression when I, when I was about thirteen, my parents got divorced, and I hate and I and I went to therapists, you know. I hate shrinks, but Robin Williams made me, go like, God, I wish all shrinks were like that. Well, you see the bad you versions know. of it before they get to Robin. Well, Williams. Yeah, yeah, you see yeah. like the the bullshit versions yeah. before they get to. I them. don't need therapy. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> that was funny, and, but. Uh, when, the, when the movie first starts out, like when he first starts talking, when Matt Damon first starts talking to Robin Williams, I, I was I was mad at Matt Damon. I hated him for like the like those beginning scenes because he was really being a dick, like yeah. I like for no reason whatsoever. But that's the point. Yeah, exactly. I know, I know, but it's but it, it makes sense with the movie, and I I admit that's and that's what it was supposed to be. But I couldn't help but be like, if this guy was real, he would get. Beat up so many times. And that's why you have to have someone like Robin Williams. Yeah. Now, and they even say it in the movie, I, I need someone to get through to him. And he's like, like me. And he's like, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I like you. Yeah. And it works because, good Lord, we're, we, we're, we're going to, we're, now we're finally going to talk about the elephant in the room. Um, yeah. Robin Williams in this movie, to go from a comedic background to doing this, this really dramatic role is just. Well, I mean, that's what I, I think a lot of people underestimate how, I mean, yeah, he's he was great at comedy, and no one denies that, but I think a lot of people underestimate how great he was at dramatic roles, too. Yeah. I mean, he and won there's the, multiple examples. Yeah. yeah, there's multiple I examples. Mean, I've been running through them just in the last week. Like, I watched Insomnia and uh, Fisher King, and I, I was just blown away. These were things I, I hadn't seen and were kind of just on my, my yeah. list, my laundry list yeah. of right. movies, and... He blew me away. And then he won the Oscar for Good Will Hunting, which he definitely deserves. And, yeah, um, yeah. You could see everyone in the room knew he deserved it. Oh, I was yeah. Like, I, I teared up a little bit when I watched it. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, the, the, the great thing about Robin Williams, he, he's one of those, he was one of those rare people that was great at everything that he did. I yeah. mean, if anybody watching this has not seen any of his stand-up, Please, for the love of go. God, you can you there can is, actually stop watching us to go. Watch there it. are two. Pause. Watch. Open a new window. <laughs> watch his live on Broadway and watch him on the actor studio, because what he is was able to do with just a prop alone, like when he's on the actor studio, he took a scarf from a woman in the audience and did a four minute bit with a scarf, and I'm like, and I, and I know you and you and I Eric, we take comedy very seriously. Mm -hmm. When you can do that, yeah. That's comedy. Yeah, that's right there. that's I, comedy. I I loved Robin Williams in anything and everything that he did, and yeah. he was so good. And it's just, you know, someone that I idolize personally. Uh, it's very sad for for me personally that he's gone, and I know a lot of people feel the same way. Yeah, I know we're. I know no one's. I know we're all not. A, no one's alone in how they feel about his sudden passing. Yeah. I know that we all. Grew up with him in a sense, uh, not in a sense. We did, um, and the fact that when I first heard that he was gone, um, I thought it was a lie because he, he's one of those people who you think you just think are going to be around forever. Yep. That because they almost seem immortal to you, and because 
you because it's it's a sense like your parents like when you like you think you think your parents are like there forever. They're always gonna be there. Yeah, and and when you have a guy, you have a person like uh, Robin Williams who you have literally grown up on his movies and not figuratively, figuratively, figuratively speaking, literally have grown up on his movies, like Flubber. And when I was a kid, I would watch Flubber so many times. When I was a kid, I would watch. I can't tell you how many oh, times Mrs. I. Doubtfire. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I watched Aladdin. Uh, Aladdin. I can't tell you how many times I watched both one and three of Aladdin. I can't tell you how many times I watched those when I was a kid because I literally don't know. Hook is awesome. And just, he was one of the guys, he was one of these actors that I knew very early on that could make me really laugh and still could make me laugh anytime I want, anytime he wanted and, to. And numerous stories have just been cropping up of all these people who he spoke to and they were in a tough time and he yeah. just came up to them. Yeah. yeah. And, just, and I mean, I, when, when someone you've never even met becomes such a huge part of your life. Exactly. And then they're all of a sudden they're gone. It's just like. Yeah. I, I cried for three days. I, I was, I haven't, I cried. And I, it still, it still is re weird to think I'm not going to, he's not going to make any more movies. Yeah. It's like when you watch those scenes now in Good Will Hunting, it, it takes on like almost another life now. Yeah. yeah. And there's so many really, really good close-ups in mm -hmm. that movie. Yeah. Where yeah. you can see Robin Williams' eyes, and he just seems like genuine. The most, he he is that character. He yeah. Absolutely is. Yeah. yeah. Well, you would, we, when we were watching it yesterday, you had never seen it before, yeah. and after the scene with him and Matt Damon on the bench, you were just like, Jesus, that was Damn. really good. Yeah. That might be one of the best monologues I've ever yeah. seen him in, in all of film. Yeah. It, it really might. It really. It really might be. And, and that bench is now dedicated to him, and I'd like to I'd like to go there. I'd like I to go. I was just there last year actually when I went to Boston yeah. to run, and and it was just so weird because I had just seen that. I had a whole bunch of pictures from there, and I was like, now I feel like my worlds are colliding. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, we just all kind of wanted to we wanted to do this episode to dedicate to Robin Williams and dedicate to dedicate it to his memory because. Again, like Nate said, with someone you haven't even met becomes like this huge pillar of your of not just your life, of also your reason for wanting to be in an industry. Yeah. Yeah. Your aspiration. Your aspiration, something you strive to be. That and and then they they're suddenly gone. It's just it's just really hard. And uh, but that's one of the things that I love about film is that you're ba when you're in film, you're basically immortal. Yep. Yeah, a lot those, of the those interviews that that he gave, he talked about that, how important it was for him to start taking roles that he thought were important yeah. mm -hmm. because he wanted to be remembered that way. Yeah, because yeah. so if you're ever missing him, you can just put on a movie. One of the 100 plus One movies of the 100 plus in. movies that he's in. And <laughs> that's like, he's still there. It's, it's, it's the same thing I do with Chris Farley and Jim Belushi, who are another big comedic inspirations to me. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's my little two cents on Robin Williams. If you have, go ahead, Hannah, if you have anything. Oh, that was that, that was my few cents here and there. <laughs> oh, okay. My pennies. Okay. But he was he's so good in this in Goodwill Hunting. I mean, I, I every I, scene he's in is yeah priceless. Yeah, golden. Yeah, yeah, every scene he's in is just priceless, and I mean, and it's just it's just crazy to think that it's like oh like that guy who was Mork who was the alien on Mork and Mindy Nanu Nanu is. Yeah. This is is it's like oh that's it's like when you watch the movie and then you go watch more comedians like that's the same guy. Yeah. He was just supposed to be a freaking cameo on Happy Days. Yeah, right. and then like, he got you know, his. We're uh, gonna give you a show. Yeah, yeah. You know what? We're gonna give you a whole show, and then Nickelodeon's gonna rip it off by call, by putting that stupid little Fred kid on TV. Well, I remember Bastards. I remember I was watching Goodwill Hunting uh, a couple days ago, and and my girlfriend Katie was standing right there in the kitchen, and she was she was just said, "It's weird seeing him with a beard." Because he's always had a beard in other like, interviews. Well, I mean, he told me that I was like, he has a beard in a lot of movies. Well, I mean, it's, <laughs> he he just disappeared under all that hair. Yeah, you know, is it weird? Everywhere. Is it weird? Is it bad that I actually might go see the the new Night at the Museum because he's in it? No, I might see it. I can't see it. <laughs> I know that's not going to be his last movie that he did because he's got like what three other movies coming out this yeah, year that he actually, did. Yeah, actually, yeah. But I might go see all of them just because he's in it. I, that's, I have not seen any of the Night of the Museums. I don't like any of them. I think they're all, I never liked any of them. 
but the fact that he is in it I might, and he's gone might make me what, what I love so much about his first scene with Matt Damon in this movie is, you know, and you hear them talking about it before, you know, don't, this is a poker game with this kid, don't let him have what you, and then you actually see Matt Damon get the one up on, he rips him apart. He tears yeah. his life apart, as yeah, he like, says yes, in the he movie. Says, yeah. dick and, move. And Robin Williams was like, I'm going to have to up, up my game. Yeah. And, in order, a, and that's why it's even better when the bench scene happened. Yeah. And he ripped him apart, and you're just yeah. like, okay, they're matched. Yeah. 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 It is an, an, that scene is so intense. When, he, when they first meet each other, that yeah. scene is really, I've never seen Rob Williams grab someone's neck like that. Yeah, that's, and I it's would jar, grab his neck too. It, I know, but it's jarring. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. jarring, it really like is. the genie just grabs somebody's neck. It's like, <laughs> the professor and Flubber just, right just grab somebody's <laughs> neck. Um, wish for the Nile, go ahead, I want the Nile. No way! Um, <laughs> but I was also talking, to, this I'll have to say, I'll, I can segue into this, we can try to segue into this. I was talking to Nate when I was watching it for the first time, like, this movie is shot so beautifully. Yeah, it is a beautiful Like, the cinematography in this movie. is just beautiful, like, every scene could be the poster for this movie. It's yeah. like touring Boston when you're in it. Yes! Yeah. So it feels like you really get the, the whole Southie thing. Yeah! Um, that all the boys are from South Boston and kind of like yeah. you get the sense like the wrong side of the track almost. Yeah, almost. Like, even the opening credit scene is just beautiful to watch. Oh yeah, I like, like how it kaleidoscope. Yeah, yeah, like this yeah. kaleidoscopy yeah. effect, and it like kind of just dissolves into just him in this room. And you see him just reading. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's a really cool way to do, way to open up a movie. That was just awesome. And the scene with Tim just looking up at the light bulb. Yeah. I mean that was. Oh those God. scenes, those those transition scenes when he's on the train, yeah. are just amazing to look at. Yeah, they like, really are. I'm just like, I could just watch this for like another ten minutes. Yeah. Well, then didn't you realize how captivating Robin Williams is whenever he has a close up, and you're just like, I yeah. believe everything you say. Yeah, exactly. you, you could tell me. Anything I feel like I was on his lap. I would believe you. I feel like yeah. I was on his lap, and I was like, just tell me a story. <laughs> just do it, just please. <laughs> he totally would though. I know <laughs> he totally would. Actually, just a little quick sidebar. Um, there is a petition online by Zelda, by Nintendo and Zelda, Legend of Zelda fans, to get a tribute to him in the new Zelda video game. Yeah, they, what? Yeah, they want to name a character. Robin. They want him to. They want Nintendo to name an NPC Robin Williams. That is so. No, 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 not Robin Williams. Just name him Robin. No, they want to name Robin Williams. Really? Yeah. Oh. They wanted to name it Robin Williams. That'd be awesome. And because he, because he, him, he himself was a huge fan of Legend of Zelda. He named his child he named Zelda. His child How cool is that? After you the name your daughter Zelda. That's amazing. Katie, if you're listening, there are people that do that. Yeah. We are naming our child Katie, after popular characters. You. Yeah. Don't to start the teaming up thing about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, that's so. But yeah, there's this whole. It's gotten over a eighty. It's gotten over eight hundred thousand signatures. I think. Jesus. Like to get, it's uh, gonna happen. yeah. Word of Nintendo has released nothing on it yet, but they want to do something. They haven't officially said anything, but World of Warcraft is doing that. They're putting an NPC called Robin yeah. Williams in their game. Yeah, I did That's hear what, about that. World of Warcraft already has done that. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is a little sidebar. But the director I've never seen. Gus Van Zant was the director, yeah, right? Yeah, he d well, he did. Uh, his main claim to fame. Yeah, right? I've well, never, he did he did Milk, didn't he? Yeah, with he Sean did milk. Yeah. Oh, I've not two, seen Milk. Two claims to fame. Yeah, I've not seen Milk. I should uh, see it. But he's see it. yeah. Because I, I do like, um, Sean Penn. I was going to say Jeff Spicoli. I was going to say Spicoli, but that's not Sean, it's Sean Penn. <laughs> Sorry. Well, he always gets good performances out of the... He does. Actors, he so. really does. Like, those two movies well, kind of prove it. I mean, Matt Damon was incredible. Yeah. That ben one, Affleck yeah. wasn't bad either. No, Ben Affleck wasn't bad for what he did in the movie. Like, that one scene where, where that you're doing in, in, the, in class where you're like, I, you know it's the best part of my day? Coming oh, yeah. home. Yeah. Yeah. That like, might be his favorite scene. You want to go to favorite scene? Yeah, let's just go to favorite Let's, scenes. Just, do it. let's, let's just, do just do it. Let's just do it. Who's going to go first? I'll, I'll go last. I oh. have several to choose from, so I'm just going to wait to see okay. what's left. Okay, then I'll go first. My favorite scene is the bench scene. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The, my favorite scene <laughs> is the bench because it literally is almost one single shot and with a, just, a little, with just a few cutaways, and there's so much said in that scene. And that monologue is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Like, especially, I'm kind of a I'm, I mean, it's, it feels weird to talk about this after recent events. Uh, but as far as uh, w w the, the, when he talks, starts talking about love, it's like, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Like, yeah. that's what you want. 
Right. Like, like the whole, you feel that God just put an angel on there for you, and then that's what she feels with you. And that's like one of maybe two or three parts I can think where it could have been so cheesy. It yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It could have not worked it at all. It really could have not worked. Yeah. But he just, the way he delivered it was perfect. Yeah. And it literally was, I, but that is all, my all-time favorite scene because it just how much it says and how 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 he says it. And the reaction shot is great. Too. And, and the I, reaction is and great. And I love on him till the very end, and then the. the yeah, I love. Did end. either of you two notice the little cue, like when he says, "You've never been out of Boston," you don't hear a response, and then he just looks at him, and then you hear, "Nope," you know, mm-hmm. it, he's like, he looks at him, kind of like waiting for the answer. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. he, he knows the answer. You know, he wants him to say it. Yeah. And the fact that he's saying, you can't understand my life. I can't understand your life because I haven't yeah. lived it. Mm-hmm. No just, one can uh, possibly yeah. know that. Just because I've read it in a, in a, in a book. Twist. Do, yeah. Does he, yeah, you think because I read all of her twists, it means yeah. I know what it's like to be an orphan? Yeah. Like, you think that's your life? And then and then the end, you know, now I've caught up with you. You're move chief. Yeah. You know, just brilliant. Yeah. That, that's that's awesome. chief and sport the whole time. I, I enjoy that. I, love, I enjoy that, too. Yeah. I enjoy that, too. Well, that's my favorite scene. My, I actually have two, but it's actually one scene. Oh, crap. Come, that, I know it's going to be the same as mine now. Go, um, go ahead. Go ahead. It's the scene with uh, Robin Williams and uh, who plays uh, Sean and Stellan Skarsgård, and they're just button heads. Oh, that and, one, yeah. Um, you know, you know, I, no, it's like, no, I, I know what I'm doing with it, boy. You know, he's... He, he's a good kid. I'm not going to let you F him up like you're trying to F me up right now. Yeah. You know, he's, you know, it's a defense mechanism. And he's like, no, I, I, I am what I am today. And he's like, no, but he's not you. Yeah. And then that, I love that. Yeah. And then, of course, that leads into the, it's not your fault scene, which. Yeah. It's yeah. just. Again, that could have been really overacting. That could have been really cheesy yeah, and, and but, it, but the way that it's done is so emotionally jarring yeah. every single time and it's it's um you see you see that that scene shows that Matt Damon has been playing the tough kid this whole time but he's been hiding what he's really been feeling yeah. for so long yeah and um it's it's beautiful i love that movie it, i love that scene it's just great yeah and my favorite scene <laughs> is also a two parter and uh it's it's the ending, pretty much. It's when Ben Affleck comes up to the door to get Matt Damon, like he's done every day for yes. their entire lives. Yeah. And um, it's a callback to a, a, an earlier scene where he, he, Ben Affleck basically lays down the law like a big brother. Like, I'm not going to let you mess up your life and continue to miss out on this opportunity when you have such a gift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would give anything to have what you have, but I don't. I'm going to be doing the same thing for what I'm 40. Mm-hmm. And I love that it's a callback scene too. I love I that love it, that it's yeah. referenced earlier in the movie. But Ben Affleck is perfect in this scene. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he knocks on the door. He looks in. He sees all the stuff is gone. He knows that, that finally that day has come. Yeah. yeah. And the and his the camera stays on him. And the music cue is good too. Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful. Fantastic. Beautiful yes. Score. Oh yeah, Danny Elfman yes. does the music in this. So. And I think they were so. nominated for best uh, song, best original song, Elliot Smith. Really? Oh. His, Miss Misery, I think. Oh, I didn't know that. So there's that. Um, So that scene, which leads to the ending, yeah, which is the second part of my favorite scene, so we can just talk about that. All right. All right, we can do that. The ending for the movie is, um, it's actually a really nice ending to the movie. Yeah, and we, we talked about this earlier. There could easily have been a sequel to the movie. See, I, I disagree. I mean, we all know... We, we know where he's going. That's why I don't think there needs to be a sequel. I mean... Because we know. Well, I mean, we, but we want to see them end up together. They're no. co- I'm just saying... As they're... a writer, I absolutely love that in the end, we don't see them get together. I'm not saying I want a sequel. I'm just saying there could have been. No, I'm saying I would have been so angry. <laughs> well, me too, yeah, actually. I, I, I would have... Wait, it would have... <laughs> I would have. <laughs> they made the joke about a Good Will Hunting 2 and, and James on the Bomb Strike I know, Back. It was terrible. That was Good Will Hunting 2, but, hunting season. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I remember oh that. My God. It was but great. I, I, I love that there's no sequel, and I love that the last line of the whole movie was ad libbed. Yes, you mentioned you know, that. Son of a hey, bitch, he t- stole my line. Son of a bitch stole my line. 
What did you say Matt Damon said about that? Matt, Matt Damon said that that was the best uh, contribution that Robin Williams made to the movie. And uh, they, I mean, Ben Affleck has said, you know, that movie never would have been made without Robin Williams. And what can you, what do you owe to someone like that? Yeah, I mean, you owe them everything. Yeah. You know, and... I mean, your entire his entire career. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. basically, exactly. yeah, but yeah, his and Matt Damon's entire career is yeah. owed to Robin Williams. And, um, Started there. Yeah, really. yeah, and I and I love, like I said, I love that there's not a sequel because, the the ending is so, yeah, bloody perfect. He's, he's a he's a Southie. Him leaving Boston is enough. Yeah, yeah. The fact that he's leaving Boston for this girl. Means and the fact that everybody's okay with him leaving. Yeah. yeah. Because they they, they know. know. Yeah. And, uh, and nobody says it. Notice, no one in any exposition has to say it. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! It just they, they just say, Ben Affleck, all he says is he's not there. And he's, and he's smiling. And nobody seems phased because they knew. Yeah. They knew that day would come. Yeah. yeah. And I like, love that Casey Affleck just jumped in the front seat. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's like, I finally get the shotgun seat. It's great. It's great. <laughs> Here's your fucking burger. <laughs> Here's your fucking double burger. 16 cents. Yeah. It's every day for every day for the rest of the, every day for the month. You give me sixteen cents and put your burger on lightweight, and you get at the end of the month. Well, that's what I love about the movie too is that it takes place in Boston, but also Ben Affleck and Matt Damon are from Boston. Yeah. So. Oh, also, Mini Driver was excellent. We did not hit. Yeah. Up. Oh my God. <laughs> well, yeah. Matt Damon did. Yeah. The. the yeah. <laughs> I think they had a little thing after that too. I think they did. they really? Well, she was very, she was... I loved her in this yeah, movie. I really did. She this, could have been an object, and she, she could have been a sobby, just a sobby mess, and that's it. She could have, but she, but she wasn't. Was not. This, she was funny, she was smart, she had career goals. I approve! Yeah, and particularly yeah. particularly in the scene where uh, Matt Damon storms out. That scene... That, that, was, oh, that was really good. God, that scene where he's like, where they're yelling I at each other. I don't love you. Yeah. Yeah, where it's just like... But you know that he does. Yeah. See, that's, he's saying that he doesn't. He knows that he does too. That's why it's good. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And I, I remember, I, you, you, did you hear me when we were watching? We were like, it wasn't during that scene when I said he's an idiot, but it was one scene. I can't remember which one it was, but no, it was during that. Scene. Was it during? He knows he's an idiot. Was yeah. it? Everyone knows he's an idiot. Was it during that scene where I'm just like, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, you're, so smart you're just like, so calm, calm down. That's what you said. You were like, calm down, dude. She's, all she's asking you to do is yeah. spend your life with her. That's all she did. Well, no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> but you love her, so shut the hell up. No, yeah. Look. yeah, I like that she leaves and he has to chase her. Yeah. yeah. And I love that they don't do it at the airport. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no that. airport oh, scene. Cliche. Have the scene or they, they stop them at the airport. Or yeah, they so run up to them when they're about to and get like on the flight them. deck. I like some of them. I'm not and you, like dissing it entirely, but it's a cop out. And you know what the beautiful now it's, it's you know amazing. what the beautiful thing is too is that you know, like the ending, he's on his way. You know she's gonna take him back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know that. It's, you really do you know, know that. that. Yeah. But but yeah, that's um that is goodwill hunting. Yes. And it's it's a it's a great movie again. It's it's one of the best movies. It's a classic. It's a classic. And, um, as, have, as have been many of As have been many of the movies that we've done we'll on this show. We might do some newer ones. We might mix it up we'll a little bit. We might do some newer ones and mix it up a little bit. As always for Movie Crunch, I'm Eric O'Donnell. Wait, wait, wait. wait we wait, have wait. to plug our oh, stuff. No, I don't want to plug the stuff. <laughs> we'll, just do, we'll do it like a sped up version. Hey, oh, I have a show called Lady Parts. It's on YouTube. We just posted a video. Finally. Yes. Awesome. It is about Lose the Warmest Color. French movie. Yes, it's awesome. About two girls in love. It's great. Thank you. I've got a mild. I've got a channel on Mild Manner Geek that's on super hiatus, and I feel bad. So but go there today. There are a plethora of videos in there. Yes, yes there and they're all there awesome. Are. In the so, meantime, there are. So I'm working on it. So <laughs> go. It's okay. fine. I have a blog. It's called Movie Crunches. I basically talk about the movies that we talk about on here, just in case, God forbid, you don't like watching this. Or you're so. just like that Nate Schaffner. I just want to read all the things he ever. He says, right, so he I don't says, care about yeah. the other two. Yeah, I'm sure people. Who are those schmucks? <laughs> they don't know what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I'm sure people say that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. <laughs> so, I'm sure they do. Um, I'm sure they don't. But as always, <laughs> as always for Movie Crunch, I'm Eric O'Donnell. And I'm Nate Schaffer. And we will see you as always at the movies. <laughs>